As important to Jack as his dog, his gun, his rods, even I think his pipe is his faithful cameraman. He's a real character. Let's join Jack and David. 21 years of out of town, and in that time, Jack, how many films do you think you've made? Well, I've made them. They've been made by my camera colleague, Stanley Breo. He's made every one since the beginning. I think we've made over a thousand. And I've had him seasick and frozen and galloping after the uh, beagles with a 30-pound camera. I don't think he could do it now. I don't think I could either. But uh, he's developed the most amazing skills. I don't think anybody realizes what making these films are like. Take a shooting film, for instance, if you're, you're trying to sh do pheasant shooting. Well, you have to swing a gun to shoot a pheasant. A gun weighs six pounds, and a top uh, shot is shooting a pheasant. If you're going to see that pheasant shot, you've got to be on the bird before he is, mm. which means you've got to swing a 30-pound camera faster and more efficiently than a top shot is swinging a 30-pound gun, if you're ever going to get that shot. And yet the last time we made a pheasant shooting film, he had 15 of those successes in the program. He's been with you right from the start of the series right up to the present day. This is right. Without a crossword, incidentally, it's a television record. I was going to say, how on earth do you get on with each other? Because you must have a special sort of relationship to work together for that long. It's now practically a silent relationship, actually, because we hardly have to speak to one another. We mumble a few things to one another at the beginning of the day about what sort of film we're going to make, and I say what I think is going to happen, and how we hope we're finally going to put it together. And after that, it, it, it's, it's largely grunts and waves, the communication. But you're on the same mental wavelength. Yes. Because you both know, without saying anything, really what you're trying to achieve. That's right. We've learned a lot along the way. I mean, for instance, I was talking about that thing. On Stan's camera, he's got a German sniper's sight. Now, we had a problem of, uh, of viewfinding on a particular sorts of films that we had to make. And he was trying to solve it. And he said he wanted a thing. And I said, well, I... I brought, and I had this thing in a drawer, I brought it back from the war, it was one of my bits of loot from the war, it was a, it was a snipe off a, uh, a sight of a German sniper's rifle, and I said, how about that, it's made by Zeiss, of course, top German stuff, mm. and he, he, he mounted it on his camera, and he did the job, and it's been on his, uh, it's been on his camera ever since, in use, my, uh, my war souvenir. He's got the most remarkable second sight, actually, once we had a most incredible shot where the little boy was looking down a hole when we were rabbiting, trying to see, see and a rabbit bolted out of the hole the little boy was uh, uh, looking down, and the rabbit and the little boy met nose to nose like that, and they both squealed, and they both went up in the air, and I fell about laughing, and I said to Stan, I wish to God we had that, and he said, we have, and he had. Looking back then over the series, it's obviously been a sort of 50-50 relationship. How important a part does he really then play in Out of Town? Well, he does the program. I do the... Uh, I mean, uh, I couldn't do it without him. I mean, I don't think I'd try. 